With Sandy, I'm CJ Mack from the Dub C and CJ Mack Show. Thank you for tuning in. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different because Dub C won't be in the studio. He's on the road with Ice Cube performing, but I'm sure he'll be checking in at some point throughout the episode. Oh. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, cool. Patch you in, Quan. Hey, what up, CJ? What up, bro, bro? So I won't be able to make it to the show today, man, but I'm about to get on this plane and go out of town to do the show. But I want you to hold it down like you always do, bro. Miss my tag team partner, man. Love you, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100. Y'all be safe. J Prince coming at you live and in living color. You tuned in to Dub C and the CJ Max show. Welcome back to another episode of the Dub C and CJ Mack Show, and I am and always will be CJ Mack. Today is going to be a little bit different. Dub C is out on the road with Ice Cube. They're touring right now, but I'm sure he'll be checking in at some point. So I had the pleasure of going on one-on-one with one of my homeboys, man, one of my partner's mentors, good friends, and all that, man. Without further ado, it's Mr. J. Prince. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, bro? I'm good, bro. That's yeah. that famous, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. man. thank you for uh, taking time out your busy schedule, man, to come over here and come chop it up with your partner, man. Yeah, hey, man, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. And thank you so yeah. much, man. You know, I want to thank you, something I never told you before, man. I want to thank you for not only coming on the show, but I also want to thank you for what you've done for my life. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't even notice, because we haven't discussed this part, but... You really changed my life, man. Um, you know, when you discovered me, I was in that trap, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was really, really in it. And uh, when I went to, I was in Chicago when you gave me a call. First mm. of all, let me back up a little bit. You was in the hood, looking for rappers. Yeah. And I tell this story many times when you ain't here, and I'm going to say it in your face. I'm smacking you around on playing dominoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's about 10 people in the house auditioning. Yeah. And then GB, rest in peace, said, man, yeah. CJ yeah. rap too. My and you man. looked at me, you said, you rap? <laughs> I said, yeah. And I bust powder puff to you. Yeah. And you was like, yeah, man, um, you got some more music? I was like, yeah, but it's like 1, 2 in the morning. I said, man, I got a house, but it's about an hour and a half away. You was like, let's go. So I'm riding in front of you. I'm like, damn, you really like, okay. You know what I'm saying? This sounds promising shit. All right, so we roll all the way out there, listen to the music, blah, 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 blah. You left. About a week or two later, you gave me a call, you know, not knowing that you. I'm in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Things ain't really going right. Uh, people owe me a whole lot of money in the streets. This is my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Things ain't right. Whatever it was, right, ain't right. So I'm out there, man, and then you give me a call, man, and you tell me to come fly to Houston. So on the way to Houston, man, I prayed to God, man. I said, and God, if you let me change my life from this for this, I ain't never doing what I was doing again, ever. Mm. Not, I will never, ever do it. And when I got there, man, you gave me the exact same amount of money that I had that I was waiting on in Chicago in the streets. You gave wow. me the exact, you didn't know. Didn't you know. gave me the exact amount of money. And I said, man, this is a sign. Mm. And I've never done that mm. particular thing again. That's heavy. And that's been since 1994. Mm. That's heavy, man. That's heavy, you know, because a lot of people like underestimate the power of prayer. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of people look at it as something weak, then a lot of people uh, haven't been taught properly. You know what I mean? You More is caught than taught. If you come from a household where you wasn't exposed to prayer, then it's like a, a joke to you. Hmm. But it's interesting to me, you know what I mean, that 
I'm not surprised of the confirmation because, right. you know, similar situations that's happened in my own life. Right. But, uh, hey, man, that's that's inspiring. I had never heard that one yeah. before, but it's inspiring today. Thank to you, know, man. You know what I mean? Well, that turn thing. I don't know around. how that never came up, man, but, you know, that's 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 <laughs> yeah. why, man, I am have always been so genuine and all that with you, man, because I know who you are and what you have done for my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So thank you. I get a chance to say that in front of everybody. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I tell uh, uh, a lot of the homies, you know, uh, back in Texas, you know, they don't believe, you know, I was solo riding through Crenshaw. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Embraced by you and all other family, you know what I mean? Which led to a whole movement. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I come through there solo. Yeah, you did. I was all in the jungle. So low. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was moving around with a purpose, and, you know, I uh, my faith is so strong until, you know, I always uh, been given the wisdom to, you know, feel and know different things. So I'm not, you know, naive to the extent that I didn't know where I was. Right. Just that the faith was so strong until, uh, you know, once I felt good people, you know, I was good. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, So what made you even want to, Get a West Coast act. You already had Seagram before us. Yeah. So what made you want to go from getting uh, having an artist just come out of Texas to want to move a little farther west? You know, it was it was always you know a part of my vision to not discriminate. You know what I mean? I, I like the money all over the place. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So it was always, and I knew it was a lot of talent on the West. You know, I had you know witnessed so many that came before y'all until I was like. You know, let me uh, diversify my portfolio out right. west, right? And see, go fishing out there, see what I can catch. Well, well, well thank you. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> so one yeah. thing I do want to mention, man, is uh, I want to mention my first day coming down there to 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 Houston. Man, you got a me- you got a memory like you know, an I got a memory. Boy. Yes. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's like tell you that, right? Yeah. So you picked me up from the airport by yourself. Hmm. We was in a red 450 SL rag top. Wow, you had that. You had a, a a huge tool, yeah, right there in that front seat. Then you picked me up. You was by yourself. I was like, man, this dude here is different, man. You know what I'm saying? Then we went to the Houston Rockets game. Mm. After we left the Houston Rockets game, we was riding around, and you said, oh man, I forgot this dude at my grandmother's house. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but I'm rolling with whatever. You know, I'm with you, right? I, you know, I definitely feel comfortable because, you know, we go get out of something. Yeah. If something happened, we go get out of right. something. Right. right? And then so we pull up to your grandmother's house in Fifth Ward. And I walk in the house and, and I find out this dude that you forgot is at your grandmama's house is Denzel Washington. Yeah. Now I'm really blown away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost fanned out. You almost didn't even have to give me no money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, hey, man, just sign me, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But that was amazing, man. And I knew you you had rules back then. And what was it? If somebody couldn't come to sit down at your grandmother's house? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I ain't like to deal with people that I, I felt wasn't rooted. Right. You know what I mean? If they felt like the hood was too good for them, then, you know, you you... You ain't good enough for me to fool with you. I love that, man. Yeah. And I, I'll always remember that, man. Yeah. And some other valuable lessons and, you know, stuff like that, man. But Denzel you, was right there with the roaches, the rats, and man. everything, right? He's a real one, Right man. there, man. And, I, and like I said, I, I couldn't you know, I couldn't believe it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So let's go back to your, your childhood because you shared some things with me. You know, I don't know how open you, you're willing to be on that, man. I know uh, you told me when you were young, man, that uh, you always make sure you had a real cool bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> you always nice, like nice things. So yeah. what was your motivation, man? Did you, at one point in your life, did you decide I'm going to be successful? Yeah. Uh, I think at the age of seven or eight years old, you know, from like witnessing all the poverty, you know, all the pain, you know, the tears and different things in my household, my grandmother household, friends household, you know, I, uh, at a young age, man, felt like, I had to be the one to break the poverty mm. curse where the family was concerned. So I wore that I wore that real heavy based on what I was feeling and seeing. Mm. Yeah. So what would you do? How would you accumulate your money and all that being that age? You know, back then at seven and eight years old, I started practicing from saving for my mama tips. 
Hmm. You know, she used to work at a cafe or something and would bring me the tips. And uh, I would say I was a pretty good saver, man, <laughs> all the way to the extent, you know, I, I would save so well I have more money than they would have. Wow. So I found myself, you know, my auntie crying about a light bill, you know, which was $8 and something back right. then. What I bring my child. Hey, ain't, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's where it started, you know, just with saving. And I tell everybody I had this, like, uh, uncanny love for money, man, hmm. where – you know, I was willing to, um, you know, just hustle from cutting grass to, you know, at a step fall. I, I just wanted to make money. I right. liked the way it felt. Right. So yeah. that that's that goes to people that they see the story now. Like, you know, they see that, you you know, you've been very successful in a bunch of different endeavors. And they see that. They don't see that, that hardworking young kid, man, that was cutting grass and doing this and doing that and saving his money and even taking care of family members then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's amazing, man. That's a true testament, man. Yeah, everybody, you know, they they love your glory, but they don't want that story, right? You know what I mean. And that story is why I appreciate my glory today. Hmm. You know what I mean. The trials, the tribulations that I had to go through, the good and the bad. You know what I mean? Because I tell everybody, if it don't rain, the grass won't grow. Hmm. So you know, I had to go through these things, and it it helped shape and mold. Me into the man I'm. I mean, I am the day. Wow, yeah, that's simply amazing, man. So I want to ask you one more question that uh, I've never heard you say anything about publicly, and you know, we can talk about it or not. Yeah. What changed for you to go from Jay Smith to James Prince? Yeah, what changed was uh, I tapped into my daddy, my biological dad. You know what I mean? I tapped into my roots. And uh, I was a prince all the time, but, you know, I didn't know because, hmm. you know, my mother had told me something different. And yeah. I wrote about a lot of it in my, my book, The Art and Science of Respect. Yes. But, uh, you know, it was always this vo void and missing uh, uh, like an emptiness in my life. And, you know, I didn't know why. But once I tapped into the prince side of my family, you know, I, and I tell everybody, you know, all the homies, I'm like, you know, don't hold that grudge or whatever it may be where your old man is concerned or whatnot. It's important to, uh, you know, at least meet the other side of the family. Right. You know what I mean? Because I almost knocked my sister off. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? For those who don't know what knock off mean, dated. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I almost dated my sister. Wow. And her first cousin had my second baby, so I was looking at both of them. So mm, mm, it's mm. important if only for bloodline purposes of knowing you know, who's who, but of course, for me to meet the prince side of the family, man, was, you know, I, I didn't know who I was in wow. totality until I met him. Wow. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I remember the change, uh, we we discussed this, and I remember the change happened like uh, a little bit after I left rap a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, wow, I was, I was happy for you, man, because I was yeah. like, man, he's, I know that that is a great feeling for him to be connected with what's truly him. Yeah, no, it was life-changing, man. It was life-changing to, you know, meet my biological old man and spend time with him and see myself. You wow. know what I mean? Because that's what I ended up doing. I had opportunity to look at myself, the strengths and the weaknesses, before I became the age I am today. Wow. You know what I mean? So it's so heavy. Them genetics is, is so heavy, man, until... You know, even with my granddaddy and great granddaddy, you know what I mean? I, you can look down the line and see yourself in those people, you know. So it was it was a beautiful part of my life, and I corrected things once and for all. Not only changed my last name, my sons, yeah, you know, everybody, you know. So we all straighten it out. We Prince, and I had the I had the pleasure of meeting him. He was super cool, yeah. and you look exactly. Like <laughs> dead <Yeah>. on, <laughs> yeah. you know. So that that was a good thing. So yeah. I want to pay a couple bills real quick. Everybody, stay tuned. You about to get an education. I we just getting started. Believe me, it's just me reminiscing right now. We got Jay Prince here, man. Very very special guest. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. What up, y'all? I'm Dub C. And I'm CJ Mac for the Dub C and CJ Mac Show. We appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us over the last few weeks. We want y'all to continue to support. We're going to continue to drop these dope episodes. Keep coming, get this good game, this knowledge, this positivity. 
First, you got to hit the button. Right there. Where is it? Where, where you put it? Right there. Hit the button, man. Hit the button. Welcome back to the Dub C and CJ Mack show, and I'm still CJ Mack. Dub C is on tour right now. He may be calling in right now. He might be spitting rhymes with the stage next Ice Cube right now. I don't know. But he's going to definitely check in at some point because uh, he can't let Jay Prince sit here and not uh, talk to him. So, Jay Prince, once again, man, it's just an honor to have you sitting here with me, man. Like I said, you've been such a mentor to me, man, in ways that people will never know. Like I said, you, you practically saved my life. But even other than that, man, you showed me that I had talents uh, worth more than what I thought. You know, I know I could rap. You know, I thought I could rap. I've been doing that since 14 years old, but I never took it seriously. And I tell you, man, like, you know, I was in the streets, but then I saw the dudes, man, I don't want to say no names, but I saw certain groups and stuff, man, that was, they were starting to get money and checks. And I was like, wait a minute, man, mm -hmm. just talk about what I really, yeah. I could do this, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. some of this ain't true. <laughs> You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I think if I go spit the truth, this should be all right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I went through that, man, and then you saw something in me, obviously, and brought me down there. But another thing that you showed me that I that I had was vision. i never forget, we were riding away from your ranch one day. And, uh, yeah, he had a ranch to him, pool all in front. But anyway, so, so we leaving the ranch, man, and you was like, you played a Scarface song, Never Seen a Man Cry Till I Seen a Man Die. Yeah. And I just was into the song, man. It was so dope. And I just blurred out. Man, I would do the video like this, and I would do this, and I would do this, and I would do that. And you was like listening. And you was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Then you said, hmm, okay. Then when I went on, flew home or whatever, or whatever that trip was. And then you called me. You said, hey, remember you was telling me them things you do with the video? And I said, yeah. You said, write that down, man. You directing the video. Mm. Yeah. I said, hey, man, I don't know how to direct no video, yeah. man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you was like, no, nah, I'm going to put all the people around you, man. You just, yeah. you just technical stuff. But I like what you put, and that's the vision that I want to see on the screen. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, that's that's another thing, man. I mean, I never knew I could do that. I knew I, I was a little kid sitting in the house watching TV all the time, and I love mm -hmm. TV and film, man. That's that's yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? So you gave me that opportunity, man, and then now I was able to direct even more videos on the label during my time there, you know what I'm saying, as well as write songs and, and stuff like that, man. So... Man, I, I could go on all day. Thank you, yeah. thank you, man. So no, the thing is with that though, you you was always uh, you were real talented and knew how to think. So you know, as we would you know ride and reminisce and different things, you know, I was I was I was listening. I'm a listener. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and a lot of times people don't think I'd be listening, but I'd be listening. I hear everything, and I, and and the way you was describing different things was uh you know, was special. And that's why I always believe, I always believe like you was before your time on a lot of different things. You know what I mean? I always believe you would be an amazing uh, uh, film writer, producer, and, and I still believe that to this yeah, day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not like surprised, you know, with what's happening right now because, you know, that happened with not, not only you and me, it happened with a lot of, uh, you know, street guys. We're some of the most talented people in the world, man. Right. If we would, you know, just exercise our gifts in corporate America to some aspect. But you always had that thing, man. man you thank know you, man. I, I appreciate it. And, and that's yeah. given me the confidence to go on and do the things that I know I can do. Yeah. You know, and I know I know now that I'm right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at first I was just kind of, like, happy to be in the game and out the streets. Yeah. But now I realize, man, I've been in this game for a long time. This, this I'm not a visitor here anymore. Yeah. So now, while God still got me breathing, I'm here and I got a chance. It ain't nothing that I'm not going to do that I want to do. Real I see tough. it, I'm doing it, and it's getting done, and that's it, man. And, and you know, and, and so look, man, before I even got a chance to meet you, you know, I used to see you guys, man, Royal Flush and this <laughs> and that. And, and I didn't know, you know, nothing about y'all. I was like, man, who's these dudes, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, these dudes look pretty cool, you know? I remember the one cover y'all had sitting around the table and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I was like, man, I, I, I like to be a part of that. You know what I mean? So, what made you want to break into music? What 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 was the the sign point that made you say, "I want to"? I'm from Texas. A lot of this is not going on. I want to get in the music game. The first the first stage came from my brother. You know, his name was Sir Rap a lot. And, I remember. You know, I didn't I didn't want my brother on the streets. I didn't want him, you know, in street activities. And it wanna, he was rapping my ear all day every day. So, <laughs> you know, my thing was, man, I'm gonna build this little studio. Give me your word that you'll stay in the studio and, and do your thing. And 
you know, we're good. So that's where the first love came from. Uh, then, you know, after uh, he showed me he didn't want it and a few others showed me they didn't want it, you know, it, it kicked in that I was playing on a million-dollar playing field. Hmm. I always wanted to be a millionaire. Hmm. So I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm at a pretty lucrative place. So let me, you know, make time and learn how to play this game appropriately. So that's what kicked it off the second go round, which led to all the blessings and the, and the fruits of my labor. You know, I just, I'm like, this is life changing. I can become a millionaire. In right. This thing. So even that wasn't easy because I remember us having a conversation and you told me that you almost went dead broke. Yeah. Messing with this music stuff. Yeah. Until mind playing tricks on me. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I tell everybody, you know, a lot of people think uh, coming in this music game is going to be easy. You know, it took me seven years before I saw any kind of profit. Mm. And I think uh, the profit was on on that other level, that album. Now, the mind playing tricks took me to a whole nother level. But on that other like grip it on that other level was a was an album that went gold. For oh, us. Yeah. So that album, I would credit you know, uh, for the first profit. And then from now, you know, the Rick Rubin thing that I ended up doing with him. And uh, after that, the mind playing tricks was the life changer. You know, that was a song that, that you know, broke and kicked in the doors from around the world because, you know, being independent, not having uh, access to video, radio, you know, we had to, like, really grind. You know hmm. what I mean? I rode around in, in a van in every state. You know what I mean? Staying there for a week at a time, just promoting. We have uh, social media back then. Right. You know what I mean? It was just like grinding in the gutters. Right. So, uh, yeah, we had to do that, man. But that mind playing tricks was a. I tell everybody, it was a song that took respect, even to those that was was hating with their arms tight and <laughs> don't want to embrace it. Yeah, just, we here. You know, yeah, the streets. You know what I mean? Demanded it, and they didn't have a choice. And you guys recorded that thing on where? We just we recorded that song, man. The whole album, people don't believe this. That whole album, I can't be stopped by done it for like five thousand dollars. Wow! At at the ranch on a pool table, <laughs> <laughs> with a whole lot of Kentucky Fried Chicken yeah, meals, Popeyes, Popeyes, yeah. and water burgers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Five thousand dollars on yeah. the pool table, yeah, $5, man. $5, so you know you work hard. You can, you know, if you, if you believe in yourself and your craft, you just gotta go for it. Man. You gotta invest in yourself. You gotta do what gotta be done. I mean, this man. I mean, like you said, man. I remember you told me that story. Like you almost went dead broke until yeah. it finally started cracking off for you. Yeah, and I did. You know what I mean? I I call it dead broke. I I hit that I hit that number. But uh, <laughs> at zero, well, you know what I mean? Big wheels keep rolling, and we just kept swinging, man. We just kept swinging until we got that song, that right song. Didn't one of those projects go go twice, actually? Yeah, yeah that was the— How did uh, that work out? How did that end up? Well, it went go. We went go independent, you know, okay. on our own, and then we put two new songs on the same album oh. and put it out with Rick Rubin. And, and Geffen Records. And, went gold and it again. went gold again. But, of course, David Geffen had an issue with the lyrical content and wouldn't put that album out. Now, mm. when he had Guns N' Roses and all these other uh, rock and roll groups with the same lyrical content, but it was right. good. Right, But he wouldn't, you know, so we had to end up doing a deal elsewhere because, you know, he told Rick Rubin, Y'all can't put that shit out. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that was the beginning of the parental advisory and all that. And it was around the time Ice T was having his problems and issues and stuff too, yeah. probably, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So speaking of problems, <laughs> yeah. Everything's going well. You're doing good. You basically, I've been out there. You're the king of the city. I, I've been out there. It's, I, basically, you, you hold it real. You hold it down for Texas, man, yeah. and, and the South in general. Yeah. And uh, a lot of other people have come up under you and after you, following your blueprint, and they've been living successful lives and stuff, so they got to attribute that to you, too, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So now you get to the point where somebody don't like it. Yeah. And I remember an incident with a, something about a, someone stashed a pill in the trunk of your car or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, what, what had happened was 
uh, this particular officer that gave me a gun charge, you know, and, and, and I beat the gun charge, you know, because what they done, the way he arrested me was illegal and all that kind of stuff. So he saw me, I'm headed to a party one night, and he pulled me over and came and put the gun all in my face and, you know what I mean, he told me to hold my hands up. and So, you know what I mean, I done like he asked me to do. Kept me on the road for like an hour and then decided to pull me on a side road in the dark and call a couple more officers. Hmm. And, you know, I'm wondering, I'm like, damn, why are these, why are these dudes, because they're having a full-blown conversation on the phone, and, and I found out they was talking to a, a, some district attorney, you know, trying to figure out, I guess, how to give me the, the case they wanted to give me. So ultimately he came and took me out of one car, put me in another car, and then went back mm. to the car that I, he took me out of and look what we got here. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So One pill. One pill, man. Ecstasy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here's a man. I was, I was square as a block. You know what right. I mean? I wasn't even drinking. No nothing back then, you know? And, uh, yeah, they gave me that charge, man. And ultimately, you know, I, uh, about two or three busloads of homies, you know, we got together and protest in front of the, you know, the police station and all kinds Whole of stuff. Whole city man. got behind you. I yeah. saw those films. Yeah, so we, they. long story short, they, they tried to drive it to a misdemeanor. I said, no, nah, I don't want no misdemeanor either. And ultimately, they dismissed the case. Wow. Well, the hits don't stop. I need to take one more break because we're going to get real, real deep. So let's take a break real quick, uh, and um, we're going to be back with it. Yeah. 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 Now, long as I can breathe, you never see me stopping. I write for movies, fuck with TV music, keep me popping. I come from khakis, beanies, Batman coats, I have few options. Now, I got Louis Louis Dodge, your Balenciaga. Yeah. Mommy, break me, barely see me poppy. He yeah, love, but it's the homies who would teach me robbery. Yeah. Not having and wanting to have it Do I wait for what I go out and grab it yeah. Walk in the school, get shoot out the stabbings yeah. Made me get fooled and made me get savage hey. Cut school, call my cousin and they got me a gun Got cool name buzzing, I'm just having some fun Acting the fool, not knowing I'm dumb yeah. Once just again, welcome back to the Dub C gun. and CJ Mack show And I'm still CJ Mack Dub C's not here, but he should be He'll probably check in sometime He's Probably on the road right now, getting down, crip walking or something you know, I don't know. But anyway, Jay, I want to talk to you a little bit more, man, about that topic. And I hate to stay on the sour stuff, but, uh, you know, uh, that's injustice, man. And then uh, I know you had another run in with the law yeah. with a particular uh, agent that was really fixated on doing something to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it been all of my life, man. I don't you know, I feel like I've been a target. All my life. I don't know what life is like not being a target by hmm. law enforcement. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and those before me was targets. You know, so I'm immune to it to a certain extent. But this particular case that you're speaking of is like the, uh, the hit man. I call him a hit man. Uh, uh, Jack Schumacher. Hmm. You know what I mean? And, and his sidekick, Chad Scott. And I call him a hitman because this is a DEA agent that has like eight bodies. He hmm. killed like eight people. And all the murders from what his uh, lieutenant says is questionable. Wow. He said he never trusted the dude, you know, because, of course, I had him uh, investigated and interviewed. So that's how I was able to get all that information on this guy, Chad. I mean, Jack Schumacher. Now... They tried to take me out. Of course, you know, you, you may have heard the story why they pulled me over in the dark one night, like 3 in the morning, and stopped me in one spot and told me to go to another spot. Mm. That had never happened to me in my life. Stopped me in one spot to be told to go to another spot. And um, when I was going to the other spot, it was McDonald's they told me to pull over in. And I pulled over at the, at the stoplight at McDonald's, and I looked over. And it's black dog, and it's a Jeep and a Cutlass over there at McDonald's. So I'm like, nah, I ain't going over there at McDonald's. It's dark over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, even at the time, I got a couple homies trailing me. 
you know what I mean? Because a lot of threats had been sent my way. So, uh, you know, we, we often to protecting ourselves, you know. And uh, so I decided to, no, at the light, he say, pull fucking over. That's what he was saying in his, you know, this was a DPS officer right. that they send to stop me. He pull fucking over. So I wave my hand. I'm going across to the Shell service station in the light, which is what I done. And he run to the car door. And I tell you to pull fucking over. I say, sir, I didn't want you to think I was trying to harm you in that dark, and I didn't want to think you was trying to harm me. Mm. What's the problem? You were swerving. So you got the wrong man. I wasn't swerving. I don't drink. I wasn't doing no swerving. Well, how much money you have on you? I said, man, you need some money or something? Why are you, why are you asking me about my money? You know, so he tell me to get out the car. So he searched the car. No, he asked me about my gun. Where your guns? Before he tell me to get out the car. Hmm. I said, my gun's down here, my hand's up here. I said, what's going on? Get out the car. So I got out the car and, uh, he told me to stand in the back of the car. So he go to search in my car. I'm like, oh, this ain't right. So I walk on the side. I say, hey, man, why are you violating my rights searching my car? Did I tell you to get back in the back? I say, well, you searching my car, man. You, What you doing that for? So, bam, he come back over to have a conversation with me. Now, I didn't let him play in my car for like a minute before I decided yeah. to walk over there on the side. So he come back over there to me. And I see him looking, making eye contact over there across the street and a cutlass pull up. This, I didn't know at the time, this ended up being Chad Scott. Hmm. He got out, a DA agent, right? He got out in an army fatigue shirt with black paint up on his eyes like he was on the football field, right? So I looked at this fool. I'm like, I still on snap. You know what I mean? I'm like, why is this man talking? And then eventually I see the green Cherokee pulling. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is the law. This is, okay. So, bam, he he say what he had to say, and then he write me a warning ticket. You know what I mean? So, bam, I I, I head to the house. And it's about four, some five in the morning. I'm sitting there like my spirit, like, you know, is, is bothering me. Like, why was they trying to pull me over in that dog? Mm. And the only reason I come up with is it wasn't nothing good. Right. You know what I mean? They right. were pulling you over there for something good. And then I checked my guns and two bullets. My bullets gone. Ah. Right? I'm like, what the fuck going on here? And a long story short, man, that's what led to me hiring an investigator and really digging into what was going on, which led uh, Maxine Waters and Janet Reno, them to come and get involved, you know, with the situation. And, uh, you know, it's all written and documented. They had a whole congressional hearing about me and all kinds of shit, man. Wow. But, you know, it was important for me to go down there and let them know I was in fear of my life because this dude didn't send all kinds of messages about what he was going to do to me. And I understood that I needed to document that and let them know I'm in fear because I plan on winning. Right. You know what I mean? If I come out on top, yeah. Then y'all don't be mad. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I have to defend and protect myself Dude. by all means necessary. So, man, like yeah. you say, man, you've been fighting all your life, man, and having these things come at you. I mean, I guess that's part of being at the top of the game, you know? Yeah. And then so your latest fight, man, uh, you know, I know that you've been, uh, you, you know, really helping for years now, man. You know, a very prominent individual, man, a very strong man, man, a very uh, influential man. You've been trying to get him home. So that brings me to our next guest, man. We also have another special guest. Um, you know, he hails from uh, the Windy City. <laughs> you know what I mean? None other than Larry Hoover Jr. You know, thank you, man. Thank you for coming to the show and just take, taking this extra time. I know you you you, you missed the plane for me, man. So I, I really appreciate right, man, that. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Definitely, man. So, you know, obviously um, through Jay's efforts, even going back to when I was signing rap a lot, you know, way back then, you know, uh, we were always connected with your family. 
So when we would go to Chicago and everything, you know what I'm saying, it was about, you know, making sure, you know, the, the Who family was involved and stuff like that. And like I said, you know, my first time meeting you, we were on a cruise ship out there in Galveston. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I wasn't even supposed to be on a ship at that time either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it was youngster, huh? Yeah, yeah. I just had a little ID. <laughs> oh, okay, at that time. cool. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So that's what I remember. You was super young. So, anyway, you guys have been working, your families have been working together for a long time in this fight to free your father, man. So let me know a little bit about, I mean, for people that don't know, I know a lot about what's going on with it, but let the people know kind of what's going on in this case. I mean, the, the, to simplify everything is my father was charged for a nonviolent drug, non drug crime. Right. He received five to six life sentences. Mm. But under the First Step Act, they, the people that was on his case, they got the exact same charges. They've been released because the First Step Act gave back some of their time. It was a discrepancy in the crack cocaine law and the cocaine law. Right. So once they straighten that out, the, all the time they gave people for crack cocaine, they gave back. So all the people on this case that had the same charges, just about all of them have been released. And my father qualifies for the same type of relief that they had. Right. But it's under the judge's discrepancy. And mm. like some of the problems is that um he's influential and they say that he might be bring harm to the community with his influence, but he's a 71-year-old man who's year old not going to bring harm to the community. If his influence would be accepted, you know what I mean? He would try to help to make changes exactly. out here in this world because nobody's happy with what's going on in our community. But if they don't want him to make these changes, he'll also be happy to live his life as an old man and try to enjoy some time outside of those walls. So we're just fighting for you know, some relief for him and for the people to follow the laws that they set. They give you the time and you go by the law. Yeah. Now you expect the law to be fair when it comes back to his situation wow. and release him since he deserves a second opportunity. Um, that's, that's, that's amazing. And it's, a, it's an amazing story, man. And, you know, I got a friend right now, man, that's uh, in a similar situation. And um, he received 30 years when he should have received maybe three to five. And, the most important thing, one of the things that you just said that st stands out to me is the judge's discretion. Yeah. So it was said in court that they weren't supposed to use certain evidence or toward, uh, other than intent. And then they end up charging him for things that they weren't supposed to charge him. And just like, so what? Well, there's a whole lot of things on the table. You would have to research and find out about that because we can't really we not really fighting that at this point. They wouldn't listen to it as, mm. you know, they usually use case law and if you couldn't do it then, you can't do it now or to set, or if you do something new, it sets the precedent for what they do moving forward, but they didn't agree to any of that. Mm. It's the First Step Act that gives us something to fight with. You know what I mean? All the stuff that happened that shouldn't have happened before when they um, gave these guys this, these cases my father and all the people that was on the case with him, the stuff that shouldn't have stood in court, that did stand in court, you know, they just kind of let that go. But once the First Step Act came, that's what gave him opportunity. How long has he been incarcerated now? He's been incarcerated for 48 years. 48 hmm. years for a non-violent crime. Okay, hold on. Now, the crime that he that they put him in a federal prison for, that was like 96, 97 when he went to um federal to a federal jail and he's okay. been in um the ADX in Colorado where he's been pretty much in solitary confinement for the whole 26 years. Wow. Wow. That, 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 I mean, that really hurts my heart, man. You know, I mean, that's deeper than I even thought. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, um, I know he's been incarcerated for a long time and I know that you guys have been fighting for the longest trying to get my him out of My whole life. There. But just to hear that the man has been in there, that there's, you know, Hey, man, you got people that have committed so many other heinous crimes that have gotten out, man. You have murderers that, that have gotten out. Uh, murderers come back home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? So, I mean, that's just really, I mean, it's devastating, man. And I can't understand what they fear in a 71-year-old man to make it. What what point is there to prove? You, you proved your point. You're taking most of his life. So what well, is there now? What is there left to prove it, to keep this it man seems, in jail? It seems like anybody that's influential in our community, especially when you're influ influential to the audience that he's influ influential to, it's a, it's like it's a threat. When, you know, he's seen what his influence was 
and how to use it in the right way. Wow. Which is not necessarily good to the powers that be. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 racism, man. It's racism to the fullest. You know what I mean? And and you know, it been going on before us, it's gonna go on after us, but you know, this is uh this is a mission that we're gonna fight to the last, you know, ounce of bread we have. That's wow. that's how I'm committed to it and you know, a lot of people don't like that commitment. You know what I mean? A lot of people feel like you should give up and and me, I shouldn't have no part, you know what I mean, and 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 fighting this fight. You know, that's that's what that's what officers and different things have told me. Why don't you made it? Why don't you disown why you come to the hood? Hmm. Why don't you I told him I'd rather be dead. You know what I mean? I'd rather be dead than to disown my hood and wow. disown, you know, my hip hop culture and things like that, man. And that and and that brings me to a subject I want to talk about definitely like in LA, you know, I don't, I tapped into the real out there. Right. right. It, it always been some real ones out there in LA, but, but, but right now, you know what I mean? Y'all have one of the biggest rats that, uh, exists in the hip hop culture. And, and his name is officer rat 100. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I have to, I have to say that because I don't never want the hip hop culture to be blind you know what I mean, and be tricked and be fooled, you know, with with these, uh, I call them bottom feeders. You know, like a catfish, they eat all the shit from other, you know what I mean, other fish, so he's like a bottom feeder, right? And uh, this dude, man, what he done in the, in the process of us working hard to get relief for, you know, my brother, his daddy, Larry Hoover, this dude chose to work with a woman Karen Chapman, who was given the opportunity to go in and interview Mr. Hoover okay. and ran off with the tapes. You know what I mean? Just ran off with the tapes. This never could have happened without him, his mother, giving a green light for that to happen. Hmm. And on two occasions, you know, when he was doing his pardon, and Larry can speak about that, they asked for permission to use a little footage just to humanize one, you know what I mean? When one is speaking so elegantly like Larry Hoover can to humanize situation where the pardoning was concerned and where the video was concerned with the Kanye West show and everything. We, we've been working hard, man, to try and make these things happen. And for a rotten dude like that to jump aboard and work against, you know what I mean? That movement, I mean, but act like he with us though. Mm. That's that's the thing. He, mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm right in L.A. with this dude. And this dude, you know what I mean? Like the snake he was, act like he was trying to help me. And I got tapes and and and, and different uh, uh, text messages that would confirm what I'm saying. This dude act like he was with us. And when I got from by him and got back home and everything, he let it be known. Oh, I'm partners on the other side. Mm. In other words, I'm working, you know, here it is. We think he finna, we do a contract. We think we finna get some footage to help, you know what I mean? This this portrait we want to do before the concert so the world could see it. Right. Yeah, he sent some ransom footage yeah. just to show that they actually had real footage. Less and then, 15 you know, seconds. told the world that mm. we didn't use it. It wasn't nothing to use. It was just showing that I do have this footage. Come on with the money. Wow, you know. So I don't, I don't normally, I don't be knowing about all that kind of stuff going on. But lately, I have been following. Since I'm in this arena now, I, I kind of have to understand and know what's going on. So I've been seeing some things about me not understanding or who did what. You know, hearing it from your mouth. You yeah. know what I mean. And and in fairness to him, not hearing, hearing his side. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, man, that's 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 it's, it's too bad because the the movement is much bigger than anyone's. Um, personal vendettas or whatever it may be. I mean, this man's, uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not well-versed. So I don't know if, yeah. the, if the tape has much to do with freeing him or I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. So, I, so I don't like to misspeak. Okay. I, I mean, I wouldn't want you to really put nothing out there that you wouldn't yeah, know yeah, to speak on, like but, um, like this is my, my life, my family rights yeah. that's being dealt with. And, um, he put a lot of stuff out to the world and in the absence of, Truth, lies become truth. So mm. 
it's something that just had to be addressed because, you know, he, he likes to talk loud and say this, that, and the other, so it just needs to be known what's going on. He done teamed up with somebody to try to pretty much bully our family. Figure that. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to take this from you guys and you guys are going to come in and do because you have no other choice. And he's doing it in front of the world trying to make like a, he got the right to do it or it's okay. And if we don't say nothing, it seems like, well, it must be true. And I guess we're going to see them working together at some point in time. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and you know me, homie. I, you know, the last thing I like to do is call one them words, you know, snitches and different things like that. But I am a person that call a spade a spade. And when I see a man, like I love the hip-hop culture. Right. Blood, sweat, and tears of my life went into this where the hip-hop culture is concerned. And when I see a man disrespect the dead, mm. you know what I mean, Tupac, Nipsey Hussle, you know what I mean, and, and go on Big U, he alive, you know what I mean, uh, 21 Savage, Master P, Meek Mills, you know, all these dudes that mean something to the hip-hop culture. When I see one, you know, act like they wake up intentionally every day to, like, shit on the, the, those that's great and that was influ influential where the hip-hop culture is concerned, then one have to put the light on that kind of shit. And then he, he jump all the way across the bridge and now my brother Hoover go. So, mm. you know, that's uh that's that's strong and uh that's unacceptable. You know what I mean? So, you know, for for LA, all the, the greats I know from that place in the whole West Coast, you know, I don't want no rattlesnake uh standing beside y'all and interacting with y'all and you don't know a snake. Mm. So I'm just letting it be known. You got a you got a officer rat one hundred, cold rattlesnake. <laughs> you know. Well, hey, you know what? You know, I hate to see it going on. You know, I'm about the uplifting of of of, of all of us, you know, so I hate to see the stuff going back and forth, especially with people I respect. You know what I mean? And people that I respect and people that I honor and people that I'm friends with and kick it with. You know, like you just said, you know, a lot of those names, those people are very, very important to me and I know the character of certain people you know what I mean so I don't get into it it's not my place you know what I mean because I know that all my people could fight on their own you know what I'm saying so it's not my place and, and, and for me to be uh, unbiased in this world no matter what I may think to myself yeah. I don't think it's my place to be running my mouth till somebody start running uh, their mouth to yeah. me right. you know right. what I'm saying and so I just think that it's just uh, I mean I'm that's how I'm raised you know yeah. what I'm saying and I just think that uh you know, I just I just like to see all that kind of stuff in, man, because it's it's just like 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 our show. You know, I don't have a we didn't build a platform to be controversial and I'm gonna get on here saying I know stuff about everybody in LA, man. Everybody ain't nobody perfect, you know what I mean? Right. But I'm not here to break somebody down, man, and start talking crazy to them and all this kind of stuff. Like I'm a grown man, man, so that ain't what it's about for me. So I understand what you're saying and, and yeah. where you come from and, and you know, I commend you on that, man. And and definitely to fight for your father, man. Like, man, uh, man. If there's anything I can even do to be a part of it, bro, with, like you like doing this, just bring it oh, to yeah. light, and, and and getting this thing out here because that's the biggest thing, Jay. With, with you, you're able to bring some exposure to this thing, and I know you've been. I watched you do it. Yeah, I was there in the '90s. You know what I mean with him, and I know what it was like. Hey, man, so we going to Chicago? We gonna do this? I know that you've been fighting for a long, long, long time, so I can understand why you would be upset. With the process being altered. Yeah. You know, we put on one of the biggest concerts in the history of hip hop with Drake and Kanye. Yes. You know what I mean? And we had a agenda. You know, we we brought uh, two individuals that was wasn't getting along, had a beef together in front of the world to let them know, okay, you know what I mean, we can settle this some kind of other way. Right. And also in the process of doing that we gave a half a million dollars away to, uh, you know, prison reform. Mm. You know what I mean? And, you know, most of all, man, we wanted to enlighten people on the First Step Act for relief for Hoover and many others, you know, because we all had that opportunity, you know, to uh, stand for one hour, one, one hours that's locked up or whatever and get a movement going 
behind that situation. You know what I mean? So I was hoping it wouldn't be the last right. move. I was hoping to be an inspiration for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Where that's concerned. Let's take a, a real stand for the for the loss and shut in because it's easy to say with a pair of lips, but what's your actions exactly. doing? You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, we, we, we done that, man, and we proud of doing that. But, you know, and, hey, like I said in the beginning, we're going to keep swinging. That's the last words he said to me. He wow. said, whatever you do, don't stop swinging. Man, now. commendable. So he got that from me. I'm going to keep swinging for him, for him in the face of the world. And here's how it's going to end. Mm. He's going to be free. Yes. Yes, yeah. indeed, man. Yeah, we're going to put that in the universe yeah. for sure. Yeah. And do the work. And do the physical work and not just talk. Not just lip wrestle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lip That's one man. of your words, right? Yeah, man. I can't lip wrestle. We ain't gonna now, just man. lip wrestle. Yeah. yeah, man. That's so commendable, man. Like I said, man. And uh, man, let's take a little break right here, man. I mean, it's uh, you don't know, man. It's like this is really touching to me, man. I, I'm from these streets, man. Yeah. And you know, my life could have been so much different. And a lot of my friends' lives are different. And like I told you, man, I got my my, my best friend in the world sitting up with 30 years, man, and 50 some years old. Mm. You know, for nonviolent crime, man, is yeah. because they felt like you getting this. You ran for all these. He ran for about twenty two years, and they like, you know, well, we got you, mm. and now yeah. you're gonna pay for that. So it, it's really dear to me, man. And um, so let's take a quick break, man, to come right back, man, and yeah. wrap things up, man. And uh, man, we'll be right back, man. <laughs> Still on a late night Cause I can't sleep if I ain't got my cake right Even when I'm up Can't wait to make a play, my nigga I can't give it up, it's like a drug, my nigga Got my niggas with me, them the ones I kill for If I need it and you got it, you get sent for Might hit the light, switch, see niggas with they brims real low It's unusual, but that's how it go On my side Now I lay myself to sleep Sliding yeah. with my sister on a late night I pray yeah. I make it back home, I got those yeah. Welcome back once again to a very powerful, meaningful, and very much needed Dub C and CJ Mack show. And I'm CJ Mack. I'm still sitting here with Jay Prince. And I'm sitting here with Larry Hoover Jr. And, um, you know, we were discussing some things during the break. And I feel really... Um, uh, Connected, man, and, and it pulls my heartstrings, man. Like I said, my best friend in the world, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, he received 30 years, man. He's 50-something mm-hmm. years old, man. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was more, we're going to do what we want to do. Yeah. And his case stemmed down deep in Mississippi. And the judges were like, regardless of what the ruling was or whatever, even when he came back and went to court and they said, well, you know, well, you charge him with this and this and that and this and that, and that. And he said, well, you know, even if that was wrong, hmm. the judge over here said he still would have gave him 30 years. So what difference does it make? Yeah. And and, and that's that's the thing, man. I I really feel this system is broke. You know what I mean? And, and I speak not only for uh, my brother who would, it's for every, you know what I mean, uh, brother, sister around the world that's, you know, got all this crazy time for nonviolent crimes. You know what I mean? This is this is crazy, man. The system is broke. And here's what's really interesting. A lot of these judges and prosecutors and all these people are, are so-called Christians and believers in, in, in the God, right? But when it comes to the word redemption, you know, they none of them practice it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I find that to be real interesting how these super saints, when it comes to that word redemption, where the whole system is concerned, you know, they, they want to kill people to bear my life. <laughs> bear my life. Shelve them. Bear them alive. Shelve them, man. Yeah. House people, house people like, 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 like boxes in a warehouse, man. Yeah. And if it's one thing I believe all of us need to come together on, that's to take a stand to change that system. You yes, indeed, I mean? man. Anywhere from the private p- presidents, you got so many different people in, you know, you got a few judges being in the news lately. Uh, they were feeding these prisoners, man, and giving people unfair sentences just to house them, getting kickbacks. I mean, this is this; these are people, man. It's like it seemed like to me, man, 
the world is 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 losing its humanity. Like everything is about the dollar. Everything is about the money. We're forgetting people. You know, if a man does a crime, everybody has different stages in their lives where they had different places, and you you pay for that mistake. Yeah. How long can you continue to pay for a mistake, man? You know what I mean? Like yeah. how 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 much time must you do? Yeah. Before you get an opportunity to to redeem yourself. You know, and when I think about dogs, they got more love for dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you think about Hoover, man, been 20-some years in an inhumane situation like that, 23 hours a day. You know what I mean? It's inhumane, man. It's inhumane, you know. Behind bombers, you mm. know, beside bombers, unabombers, and all these people who tried to destroy humanity. And they, and they have less time than mm. him. You know what I mean? So this thing gets real cold, man, in my spirit. See, my spirit come from up on high. You know what I mean? So I'm out. I'm out of control. I couldn't. I couldn't control or get off this ride if I wanted to. Mm. I got to be obedient to the Creator. Wow. So you know that's that's the way that is, man. And uh, you know we're gonna have to unify and come together to bring about change where it's concerned, bro. Definitely, man. Well, yeah. well, well, count me in, man. Uh, yeah. if there's anything I can do, especially you know with my platform or me getting out here. Physically and rolling. I, hey, I know Chicago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, I, I owe Chicago for some of the bad that I created when I was a young man yeah. and some of the destruction that I may have helped cause. So it would be an honor to be able to come down there, help out and do something to to help rebuild any way that I can, man. And in the, in the family, man, you know, I respect and love your family, man. And I know what it means and what you guys stand for. All right, I appreciate that. And I'll definitely reach out to you. Yeah, Let you know do. when it's time to... Come on and step in and, and roll I'll with be us. right there. I mean, he tell you, man, I'm standing up. Oh, i tell yeah. you something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, other than that, man, I guess we're going to sign up out of here, man. This is really deep. You know, I, I ain't going to lie, man. I'm feeling some kind of way right now, man, that I haven't felt on any of these other uh, shows that we've had today. Yeah. So, yeah. man, I thank you, brothers, man. I thank y'all for making me get in touch with, you know, who I am and to know that I'm running right here free. It didn't have to be. Because I've made choices that you could have, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, and it just reminds me, man, of the people that are are, are, are still suffering. And, and your your father and, and many, many more oh, yeah, are, yeah. Are, are still suffering, man, at yeah. injustices, man, and, and unfair, very, very unfair treatment, man. And uh, it just gets me back on my square to make sure I'm out here trying to do the best I can. Hey, this, this free my father is blank because there's other fathers that could be put in this spot. Wow. You know? So I definitely need one of them t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll buy it. I don't want it free. I want to yeah. buy one of the, some of those yeah. t-shirts, man. Thank you, Larry Hoover Jr. I appreciate you, man. You got my word on whatever you need me for, man. Jay Prince, yeah. you my homeboy. You my brother, man. You my mentor, man. Love you to death, bro. Yeah. And uh, I'm always respecting you and what you do, man. And thank you so much for taking the time out. To come here and be a part of the show. Oh, good, bro. So that ends uh, this episode, and uh, this was a tough one for me. Uh, Dub, why you leave me here on this one? <laughs> good, I hope your show is cool, man. And uh, you know, I know Jay gonna say what's up to you. You yeah. know, he was what's he was up, looking. Dub? Yeah, he was looking right. for Connect you, man. Gang. You hear Connect spirit. gang, bing, yeah. bing, bang. That's what he's doing right now. So thank you guys for watching and connecting with us today. And we'll definitely be back for another power packed episode next week. We out. I want to know where. <laughs> The hardest light-skinned brother in America who was born <laughs> and who raised him. Who raised him? Who uh, raised him? The question is who raised him. It's not even really where who I'm from. Is who raised him? Uh, right. Man, I was, you know, I was born in San Jose. Uh, pops sold drugs. He was a butcher by day, sold drugs by night. So just hmm. kind of was introduced to the street life. Saw drugs real heavy in the 80s. You know what I mean? We, and we had the party house too. So I was seeing people do what they do. At an early age, right? Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm Italian and black, um, so biracial. But I really like came, you know, kind of grew up in the streets. As, as right. a, you know, my, but my parents were, you know, I t I called them functioning drug addicts because we never went without. You know, I felt like everyone did coke back in the '80s in their day, like that was what they did. So we were always, you know, bathed, fed. 
dressed, went to school, uh, but I just saw a lot of real shit at an early age. <laughs> 